Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Just the Basics. I know I haven't been updating the series nearly as much as I should. It's been a year since the last video, but my editing has improved since then. But I think I'm gonna save that editing for the Just the Noob, uh, you know, f for Noob series, which I cover each sub factions and kind of explain their nuances. I'm gonna preserve kind of Just the Basics for kind of, well, non-scripted videos where I just talk about the game, have a little bit of fun with it, but really try to teach you something. I see a lot of people not understanding how to do teching and what good build orders are in the first uh, couple minutes or so. Like they know how to do late game stuff where tier 3 comes into play and they know what each sub faction's tier 3 units do, but like in the early game they have basically no idea how to do anything. And it's really frustrating watching people kind of fail, not because they're essentially bad at the game and don't know much, but they are lacking behind on some basic mechanics, which can be ironed out with just a few games in the practice rounds. So this is what I'm going to do for you today. I'm going to bring every heavy faction into Doom Patrol 2. I am going to explain the build order and what to do in certain scenarios. This isn't a complete guide on these uh, factions. I'm just explaining how to get the attacking order right, how to get it in the shortest and probably the fastest way possible, and for you to be able to realize that you can actually get a whole lot of units out on the field even as you're attacking, even as you're doing this, and explain the nuances of each faction a, a little bit, not too much, not as much as the entire guide I'm going off script anyways here so I hope you guys enjoy we're going to put timestamps in the description and in the comments of each faction I'm going to do China Pacific Front and then HQ and then lastly I'm going to do Last Bastion so I hope you guys enjoy this video and I will see you in just a second because I'm going to put the China build order on Hey guys, welcome to the Soviet build order. We're just gonna start off Building. on the bottom, of course. Construction Barracks, options. power plant, one engineer, options. five dogs, waypoint. Yes, Remember to use hotkeys, control groups for easier access. Training. Build a bunch of conscripts and don't ready. do not ready. lack on your building. It is really, really easy sometimes to, um, you know, not build anything, and especially forgetting to build your refinery or your war factory in the beginning of the game is very detrimental. Now, of course, we don't have anybody in this game. We're just going to practice this guild order, get it pretty much absolutely perfect, and just keep building. Training. Building. You want to use up as much Unit. resource Ready. as possible. Keep it under complete. about 3,000 if you can. Building. If you cannot, Unit. then... Comrade. Comrade. Oh, well. Complete. You can pretty much, Unit. I think, Ready. with Soviets, just continuously build Building. conscripts. Ready. It's pretty easy Moving to training. get a mass Comrade. amount of conscripts. Even if you're like... building miners on the side and stuff like that. If you just micro your miners, a little bit like that, okay. Now, of course, you also want to be able to control this group. So, this is the about the amount of infantry you should and could have if you keep building. And remind reminder to micro your miners back on this field. We got some insufficient funds, um, which is pretty unfortunate. Maybe you can get away with not building as many conscripts if your opponent isn't going for some Unit kind of ready. fast pushes. Building. Turn crazy con, why not? Unit promoted. Training. Now, okay, so you get that. Remember, three Tesla reactors ready. equals Concrete one reporting. functioning fuel barrel. I see a lot of people going on low power. You can also go two Tesla reactors, one refinery into the fuel barrel, uh, which fuel also fuel works. So right here we are flowing a lot of money, so let's just get more conscripts, more miners out. And at this point we have tier 2 switch over to building, um, 
you know, infantry and then tanks stop on the minor production for a bit. You should have a lot of infantry out at this point if you're not throwing them away or losing them to dogs. So you, sh you can have a lot of tanks out, especially as China, Killian tanks are um, fucking amazing. You want to be abusing them as much as you can. So here we go, nuclear reactor, we can put this in the front maybe and then go into that. Something I haven't been doing that you should be doing is uh, throwing down those repair drones and having them on a hotkey. Those are really, really useful. And, uh, did I just get a fire power crate on that thing? Are you serious, dude? Okay. So, your lab is about 50% done. You've gotten a couple vehicles out. What you should do at this point is add on a couple more miners. You see I have one, two, three, four, five, five miners. You can sell this refinery back here after the gems run out. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. So the armadillos costs a lot. And now that you have the Adam Heart, you got some defenses up. Uh, usually people will go for Iron Curtain with our China with the EMP station and then after the two miners we're gonna build a Centurion and a Kirov. And of course now you want to have eradicators, you remove stuff like that. Keep your money in count. It should never dip below uh, 2,000 and it should be never up, be above 3,000. So here we go. Got a nice EMP station. You want to charge us up as fast as you can. Keep dropping the repair drone whenever you can. That's pretty important. Now the Insta Shelter is uh, pretty interesting. You can use it for obviously you know kind of like advance you can push push it over here you can spawn it and then put some conscripts and actually i recommend me putting flag troopers in it because when you have flag troopers in it they actually do a shit ton of damage okay so here's an armadillo and here's a flag trooper look at how fast this thing melts and that's heavy armor too so here comes the Turian. So around this timing is where you can have, Building. so after you secure the second ore field for yourself, or if, if you Unit. base crawl, you, you will crawl up here or here. Um, I didn't really do a base crawl E Building. strat. Uh, sometimes you will have, want to have more MCBs. However, what I did is AOK -okay 2 You want to put Yuru if you're a noob, and if you're versus like, uh, something, a faction that can snipe your room very easily. You put your room in the Centurion, you put your Eradicator in the Centurion, you get a couple new us. This infantry blob is very effective, so um, at this point, most people will stop building uh, conscripts. Uh, instead of the conscripts, you just build pyros for anti infantry, and fl but flak troopers are always useful. I'm not gonna lie, flak troopers are very, very good at what they do. So just keep building those motherfuckers. So right now, you see, I have the economy, I have the infrastructure going. I need to, I can put more MCBs, I can get more barracks or more more factories. I need to pull the miners over here. And also have wall buster, urator, insta shelter, the vulnerability, and EMP pulse all available at the same time. Now obviously, and also a couple repair drones for the Centurion. This is a pretty unstoppable army at this point. If you get to this point as China and manage not to lose your like initial force, though you're pretty goddamn set, I would say, in the short and long run. Don't forget to queue up two or three more miners when necessary, because that is always appreciated if you're not if you're feeling like you have enough army to save off your opponent, keep building those war miners. War miners are, are not as efficient in the late game as a lot of the other options you have. But the good news is you don't have to keep building reactors because this thing is a beast. That's why I build a couple of Tesla coils to protect it. You want to be able to protect your nuclear power plant. That is really important. And uh, I think uh, at this point, you just keep adding on refineries when you feel comfortable, adding more uh, Nua cannons, armadillos, you know, uh, Kirovs, supplement your main army, make sure you're protecting your Centurion with the repair drones that you have. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the China build order. And uh, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so we're going off with Pacific Front this time, playing as some allies.
Construction complete. Now, New construction of course, complete. engineer, Training. a couple of dogs, and then a whole bunch of GIs. I like the number 10. You can go with whatever you want. Remember to use hotkeys to get your troops in position faster. What's this guy said number three. Select this guy said number two. But very important to micro your dogs in the beginning so you get maximum shroud coverage, right? So obviously we're playing a empty game, training. just trying to train up. You want to be able to send some Building. infantry over here to complete. able to kind of scout around. Now, Building. I will say this in every training. single video, you Unit do not ready. want to float above 5k cash in the early game if you can help Unit it. Uh, I think a lot of people are broke at the beginning training. of the game uh, because Unit they ready. focus too much in anti-vehicle. A little bit too early. Well, well the thing about this is, you can pretty much get away with getting like a couple of anti-tank. Like, look, four guarding GIs is a 1K, but you can train 10 GIs with the same money. And at the early game, you want more GIs unless you're going for a rush. Oh wow, I got a Paladin. Damn. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't expect that from the crate. Oh shit, I got distracted. So, don't get distracted like me. Keep building miners. Especially a specific front, you want a lot of miners to be able to kind of focus your economy going. Because you're a late game faction, and you want to have at least six miners. Yeah, say it with me, six miners when you tier two kind of hits. And um, tier eight miners when you're tier three hits. So keep building boxes, keep building GIs. And then I usually don't go too heavy on the Guardian GIs, even though they do a lot of damage. They are also very expensive. And I don't think people recognize that um, Guardian GIs are pretty expensive compared to GIs. So you do want some cannon fodder. So now you can transition. You have one, two, three, four, five, six miners. You can transition into uh, vehicle production. Get some of that. Uh, two Lugies. Pretty important when you have your airfield up. Unit ready. There we go. When you have your airfield up, you can build seals. You put the seals in the IFVs, and their weapons becomes like a hundred times better. Don't forget your waypoints. So a lot of the time, people will also go for rocketeers. You can't really go for seal IFEs and rocketeers at the same time. You simply just don't have enough money for that sometimes. And at this point, you should be just fully understanding where your eco is at, where it can be. And after you mind out that thing, you can pull out a couple MCVs if you want. Also, don't forget to build, unlike me. Um, I'll do this better in other videos where I'm more focused on trying to tell people how to play instead of how to build. Like, you want to have everything pretty much in like six to seven minutes or so. Like, this is a pretty good damn good force. You can put on some more GIs if you want, but at this point, I would say stop building GIs. At the, like, pre. pre Pre tier 2, which is, these are the tech buildings for tier 2. Pre, pre tier 2, I would say it would be good to build the GIs. But after that, it's really hard for um, GIs to be able to combat anything. They kind of just become shields. And at this point, you have another MCV up. And most people will go into Blizzard production. I personally go into Balotaurus production. With more guided GIs, more seals, and suppressors. Uh, this is because, t in order for Pacific Front to combat some threats and not lose as much money, you would really, really want those um, battle tortoises. They are they take pretty damn long to build, so it's hard to get harder to get them out. That's why people go for Blizzard tanks and Zephyrs, first of all, but. With this army, you should be able to hold most of the time. So that's why after the ore purifier, like this is an exact build after a tier 3, you just want to be able to pump out more factories. Practice are really important for allies overall because they focus on their vehicles, need a lot of combined arms compared to other factions. Uh, a good number of 
factories to have is about three. Three factories, I say, is a very good number, and uh, each power plant can support four factories. So just keep that m number in mind. You want a couple more suppressors here. So now into the late game, you definitely want to keep building more and more. So this is where you can get a lot of units going. And these, sometimes you can build more Tsurugis in the, uh, instead of Kappa tanks in tier two, so you can put engineers in them. That will be a very, very good option for allies, of course. So here we go, so try to secure as much money as possible. And don't forget that allies, uh, the experimental warp shop is cheaper than a super weapon, but it has a lot of the abilities of a super weapon. For example, oh, and never put more than one suppressor in a battle tortoise. That is a big no-no. You want one suppressor in each battle tortoise because they uh, tend to focus the same target. Now the warp shot gives you a couple abilities, uh, mainly back warp, chrono boost, and warp binders. Those are all very important, and um, they are pretty much a super weapon. They can be able to very, very counter, like they can counter other stuff really well. And now after you have the warp purifier, you, you tend to flow a lot of money as allies. And uh, that's pretty much it for Pacific Front. You could just building. keep building prism towers, grand cannons, whatever, crawl this way. As for your anti-building options, you obviously have the hailstorm, the zephyrs, and all that stuff. They're very good. So what you should do is after you have this infrastructure of warp shop, purifier, you should keep building war factories until you decide you need something. Because unlike the Iron Curtain, the Allies super weapons aren't that good. I hate to say it, but they really, really aren't that good. There's a lot of things that you can uh, just make up with Warp Shop. And uh, this back warp is basically a kind of like semi super weapon at this point. It's like a like a really, really sub super weapon. For example, uh, okay, just put this here. So here, let's take some bruised battle tortoises. You take a back warp on it. It repairs the full, and it keeps repairing. Meaning you can put a couple battle tortoises inside of that area of effect, and man, oh man, does it get crazy, crazy tanky. Building. Pretty much nothing can kill it except for mind control. And that is definitely a good thing to have. So now you have this kind of big blob of Pacific Front Forces. You can pretty much roll over any um, army with this. The suppressors are just way too fucking good. And um, at this point, go for Wiser Controller, put it under a gap generators, and you're pretty much set for the game. That's gonna be it for the allies. Let's move on to the next one. Alright! We're playing HQ this time. Giving it a little bit of a sprinkle with that weird ass looking barracks. Now, engineer, a couple of dogs. I mean, not dogs, spooks as always. Now, the spooks are very crucial for Epsilon. You want to be able to conserve them if you can. Keep up on that infantry production as always. Use control groups to so make sure you don't want to get lost. Training. Initiates Unit are pretty ready. important for uh, Epsilon early. They do a lot of damage to light vehicles vehicle, uh, and into buildings in general. You can often bully other Unit factions infantry complete. around with Initiates. Just watch out for crushes. Now, I wouldn't build too much archers early game, uh, although they are only fifty uh, dollars more expensive than initiates at this point you don't really need them uh, something often I do when people are rushing me is that I skim out on the anti-infantry anti-tank until I can get something better because anti-tank is always more expensive than anti-infantry all these base infantry initiates included are initiates are actually really good at anti-tank like I'm not gonna lie, they're probably one of the best options in terms of like anti-tank. 
There we go. A little bit broke there. You want to be watching that, especially as F song, because uh, you can get out, run out of money very quick. And this is why I say conserve your spooks because you can put them into bio reactors. They're very cost efficient. Oh my god, the five power grids. They're very cost efficient. Um. In terms of power supply, so you can basically just spam the hell out of these guys. So there you go. I, I think you need another power plant before that, so just keep building that. What do you have? Three? It's okay. Remember, six? No, wait, I don't need two more here. So after you, tier two, you can go into some brutes, archers, equal number of both. Uh, two fully filled bioreactor will be able to sustain your, um, you know, your entire tier 3 build, so don't forget about that. Now, a lot of people will go for MCV rushes. I would say that's a pretty good option for right now, it's, but it's not that safe. Most of the time, you want a lot of Gatling tanks or um, Opuses. Opuses is, are special uh, because you can put a unit inside of them to give it a double cannon. So at this point, keep building. And I usually would recommend building Opuses because they are actually really fucking good. And most people will also go for a Pandora hub first since you can build Shadow Tanks. Shadow Tanks are expensive, Raider options. But they are also stealth and really hard to deal with. Just remember to keep building. Keep that money down. I'm not that good at doing it. Uh, but you want to be able to keep your money down below 3,000 in the early game. So here we go. That a lot of shadow tanks going. You, sh you should have a lot of money at this point after the Arcala. Get this, this, and start... Colossus production, right? Cloning Vats is very necessary for Epsilon. Do not forget Cloning Vats ever. So here you go, a large army already. And we're just at the tip of three, tier 3. You should have at least this amount of money. I mean, not money, but like units, if you're not throwing them away. Um, I, in a tournament I hosted, damn, people are not very good at the whole... Yeah. So you can throw in a couple more Initiates, Archers, and Doom Riders are also pretty necessary, but I usually hold off Doom Rider production until it has some kind of Colony Vats. So this is one, this is two, Colony Vats is coming up, so here we go. A couple of Spooks for those Bioreactors, and then with the Colony Vats you also get Viruses. And those are really good anti-infantry options, so here comes the Arcala. You're gonna build more Miners, a Refinery is on the way. With this army, you should be able to crush most things, if not all things. Uh, some people like to go for a Haz Quad, which I highly recommend as HQ. Like, just really highly recommend. I'm only giving you like a simple build order, and not the entirety of um, how to play HQ. But I would recommend building a Haz Quad at the beginning of Tier 3, just to cloak your army, set up on your opponent's base, and be an annoying fuck. You know, just just generally annoying fuck. Uh, some people will go for the Rage Inductor here. After you set up basically your second and third economy, you go for a support weapon or more war factories. At this point, we have another MCV, so we're gonna move it up here. Yeah, the second MCV is actually pretty important for most people because you need to be able to expand and you want to build your army up quicker. I mean, your buildings up quicker, which in turn builds your army up quicker. A uh, Colossus is actually pretty important, pretty damn important for Epsilon. So we're gonna do that. Now, I think people, some people as underestimate the Dune Rider. Do not underestimate the Dune Rider. It is a very, very good. Oh, look at that, a free Colossus. This thing is actually a really, really important part of Epsilon Siege. Uh, if you're not spamming stalkers, which you should be spamming stalkers, because why aren't you spamming stalkers? Uh, you could definitely spam the living hell out of Dune Riders because they're faster. 
they do are they are much cheaper and also they can you can shadow cloak them shadow rain them so all these are cloaked you can just move them on the side and they do a shit ton of uh, building damage let me just build a war factory to show you how much damage they do now stalkers are obviously always going to be the better choice if you need long range siege but oh here comes the hazard so what you do here is you deploy that everything becomes cloaked here and you can just run run in and out of that and it gets really really annoying for people okay where's that oh i kind of placed it here huh just keep building make sure your money is down so you should mind this patch this patch later on you should crawl with you know defenses like these tier 3 defenses or inferno towers very good options so let's just place it here get another bioreactors okay so dune riders this is like what one two this is six dune riders what where is this guy doing okay whatever they actually kill buildings really fast they kill defenses fairly fast as well they're very good options all around and they also outrange yeah and you can spam a lot of them with the cloning bats now suckers are always going to be the better option like i said but again dune riders are also very good so at this point you should have rage all your abilities up you rage these guys barrier and you just fucking run them at the enemy and there's nothing you can do about it look at this glorious mob right here dude absolutely amazing and just keep building that's it for epsilon hq let's move on to the next one hey guys for the last build order we're gonna do it's gonna be foeman life's bastion of course all of the heavy er factions today now for foeman the start is gonna be a little bit different it's more important for you not to be broke than it is for you to try to keep your money down so here we go put the engineer in there use a knife ray to cover a lot of the times on this map it is very very annoying when your opponent are able to kind of uh, snipe out your first engineer because you don't have dog coverage oh and don't forget to scout this area a little bit of slow on this but in a real game you can't be as slow or else your opponent oh okay here we go put that in there your blow 2000 great i wasn't doing this in the other now a lot of people on this map of course go for the double double refinery build as following you can get away with this really nicely since you have cheaper refineries they're only 14,000 and also they build faster than any other refinery so getting two minor mines in the beginning is actually a really good option you can actually go for a third refinery if you so choose because uh, they're just so good and for minor mines the rule of thumb is you want two minor mites to every one miner and you can build a lot more of these refineries so here we go free refinery build is totally okay by the way you just want as much economy as possible but you have to watch out for either early rushes or vehicle rushes it's very hard as foeman to deal with that without vehicles of your own so now that you have a bunch of minor mines you have tier 2 up you want to get cloud piercer first so you can get spin blade to boost your economy but then also nano fibers second most of the time so here's where you want to either go into bison or jackal racers jackal racers are nice harassment tools bisons are just to hold the goddamn line until you can get something better and also you can build in the mcv i always put the nano loom in the back because i know that it's really really easy to snipe this thing with bomb buggies or whatever just uh actually one demo truck here would just destroy your entire plan so i don't know anyways row gunners really important uh this is nice to cover these buildings from being attacked 
tier 2 defenses are actually really, really powerful for Foen because their tier 1 defenses also cost power anyways, so why not just spam tier 2 because they're gonna do better anyways. Here we go, Spin Blade, put that shit maybe in there. Spin Blade also affects Jackal Racers. Alright, watch this. Ready? Set. Look at how fast these shits are. You can just run these guys into the enemy base, kill something, and then get the fuck out. And the fact is still on them. Look at this. It's broken. It's broken as fuck. So here we go. I have not been building at all infantry. You want to build a ton of infantry, obviously, at this point. Do not forget that. Huntresses are a good option, but never build too many of them. You never want to have more Huntresses than knife frames because, one, they're very squishy. They're not very good frontline units, and uh, they they um, they tend to overfire, meaning they tend to like kill things more than not. So at this point, I usually like to get a lot of Grails because Godsbane's are my anti-armor option, while Grails are the um, anti-infantry, anti-building options. Plus, they get, come with three free knife frames. So it's very nice for that. Now I have way too much infantry, way too much money than I can spend. Now I'll sink these guys. That's right, if you build the Nano Bloom early enough, you can Nano Sync your infantry when your tier 3 is about up. So then you go to Uragon, Giant Spains. A lot of clairvoyances. You obviously want to have at least three barracks as Foen, uh, since your infantry production is so important. But sometimes people would like to go for something else. You know, obviously you can go for. Oh my God, Foen economy is so broken. Do you see this here? You're already at a very, very good number. Even though I'm producing all these like really expensive units you can see my economy is still on track sweepers are also a fantastic option to defend or even to push they're kind of like widow mines if you play starcraft you just set them there and they will constantly be annoying attack people and just kind of be all around nuisances so you can deploy them it'll be and then you can fire them at this. They do a little bit of AoE. Uh, they're mostly better against vehicles than infantry, but they can do versus infantry in a pinch. Now, raccoons and solar array are support units. Mastodon is what you get when you really, really want to waste your money. I'm kidding, sort of. It's like, it's hard for Foen not to waste their uh, money on, what's it called, on <laughs> Mastodons, they're, they're really useless most of the time, but uh, don't ever stop building Jack Racers, if you need something fast, Jack Racers is obviously the better choice, the refineries, you can sell a couple of these if you want, Mastodons are good for one thing and one thing only, and that is healing infantry around when you activate the nano charge ability. It will heal the Mastodon and it will heal the infantry next to it. So you can heal a lot of these guys. So here we go, nano sync these. You get a very large area with them and you get basically just better infantry all around. So you want to do that. So that is going to be Last Bastion, the Tempest. Build it at your own discretion, but at this point you're running out of money because you're not fighting anything. Cohen needs to be very active around the map to be able to kind of like sustain their economy. Because at this point, yes, their miners are really efficient, they're very good, but um, it's just, sometimes it's just not as good as you think. And you just need a little bit extra boost. With this army, you should be able to kill anything around the map. Basically, Uragon and all of these infantry, it's very good. Just one thing though, uh, I see a lot of Foen players make this mistake of building too many Lancers. Lancers are really good, 
an anti-armor, of course. They have... Look, just take this... They kill that in a jiffy. And the sensor array is actually one of the tankier vehicles in the game. It's just that they run in first, and anti-infantry gets them really fast. It's really easy to kill these guys uh, because they're the short range. So what I really recommend people is do this kind of formation where the Lancers are kind of back. You put their knife frames forward and you hold off on the Lancers because a lot of times they will charge in and they won't do that much damage, get shredded by the anti-infantry and just get completely massacred and you're left with no anti anti armor response but uh, obviously the nano sync version fixes that you nano sync these guys and they will have real gunners will have a bit of range a lot of range actually slower flyer rate but a lot of range look at that damage actually could chunk really really fast and don't forget to keep putting down splint blades all over the fucking place because those things are cheap and they are effective last thing just throw in the uh, boy blitz wherever you want takes a bit of charge up but it's basically a support weapon anyways and that's gonna be it for Fowen last bastion anyways this is just a basic build order for teching purposes. I know a lot of people don't know how to tech, that's why I'm kind of doing this. Which I hope you guys would really focus on that. God, there was too many people in my tournament who did not know how to do this. So, that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys had a good time. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Ciao! Construction complete. Oh wait, actually. How much damage does a Great Tempest do to Plasma Rise Let's just see here. Huh. Not a bad amount indeed. Not a bad amount. Preparing. Just half. Anyways, that's gonna be the end of the video. Construction Ciao. Complete.